So I'll just get my clicker. So yes, um, as Frank nicely introduced us, um, I X reached us Elaine, Rebecca, and I'm Ruth um, here. So catch us afterwards for a chat uh, during the cocktail hour. So um, yeah, um, I'm going to talk about remote peering. Uh, it's a core product of ours. Um, it's something that we uh, had a hand in pi being pioneers of. Um, we were the first reseller for a lot of internet exchanges, um, and we worked very closely with them to, to develop the partner programs. So I'm going to talk a little bit about that today. So just to give you a little bit of background, um, it's not a corporate presentation, so I won't go too much into detail. Um, but basically, we are a global wholesale connectivity solutions provider, mainly layer two, but we do um, dabble in other stuff like layer one occasionally and layer three. Um, our, our customers are mainly carriers, ISPs, large content networks, hosting companies, that kind of thing. Um, so very much wholesale. We don't deal too much with enterprises, um, that kind of thing. Um, we're in, actually, I think it's more than 30 major global cities now. Um, I think it's more like 35. So we're constantly growing, and that's always a pain for marketing because we can never keep up with it. Um, we're in 20 internet exchanges in Europe and the US, um, more predominantly in Europe. Uh, our network actually began uh, London, Frankfurt, Amsterdam, and Paris was our first um, little step into the world of uh, networks. Um, and we grew up from there, so that's where our biggest footprint is. Um, and we're global leaders in remote peering, we like to think. Um, so that's our network, um, as it looks today. Um, like I said, biggest footprint in, uh, in Europe there. Um, but we've recently popped Dubai, so we're doing a big um, campaign over in the Middle East at the moment. Um, Rebecca's the person to speak to about that if you want um, some nice pricing. It's not always the easiest from the Middle East. And we're also uh, building up the LA pop um, which is a sort of new territory for us. We've always had network over there, but um, building the US market is something that we're really looking to uh, take to the next level. And Asia is becoming interesting. So via the Middle East, um, some of our customers are now asking us for connectivity over there. So watch this, watch this space for that. And just to give you some numbers, that's how we're looking. And these are all our partners, including France IX, one of our favorites, of course. <laughs> Um, so these are some of the services that we uh, offer. Our main one, point-to-point, -point, multi multi-point, um, selling capacity on our network. That's what we like to do. Um, our niche is also connecting um, customers to uh, the internet exchanges remotely. Um, so it's sort of an added value, uh, and, it, and it gets our customers on board. We can provide a full solution um, right through from your transport to connecting to multiple internet exchanges in terms of the port, the legal, the billing, um, any kind of paperwork you don't want to deal with, we'll sort that out for you. Um, we also do, I said we don't deal much with enterprises, but we do dabble a little bit. Um, so our, our, our uh, Amazon Web Services Direct Connect, for example, um, we're an official partner of them. Um, it's basically what we do, point to point, um, giving you a, a, a direct uh, link into the AWS platform. Um, so some enterprises like that, especially financial guys, content guys, um, it's very secure. It's it's very safe, um, and they, they have their own um, private link. Um, Transatlantic, of course, over to the US. Um, Metro uh, circuits, uh, we have an enormous amount of pops now in um, especially London, Frankfurt, Paris, and Amsterdam, um, and Manchester as well. Um, so some of the big guys like to use us for that, um, given that we can access a lot of data centers for them, um, and they can reach more customers. Um, IP Transit, not much of our core product, but we do, we, we do sell it. Um, again, co-location, if you want the full solution, we can even build a pop for you, and we can uh, put in a rack. Um, virtual pops, a new thing, bit of a buzzword, um, bit of a marketing spin, but we can also um, long line some customers from regions in Africa, for example. They seem to like that, um, and over from Asia if they're just stepping into new markets. So it's a, a bit of an extra thing that we can offer. Um, and again, some, some private lease lines, but we, we generally deal with the wholesale guys for that. So on to, that's the corporate bit out of the way. Um, now I'll talk about remote peering. So just to give people a reminder, I'm sure you don't need it much, um, just the difference between peering and transit. So peering being settlement-free interconnections uh, between two networks. It's extremely cost efficient, generally. Um, it can optimize your traffic. It's very scalable and redundant. 
Um, and uh, it's, it's generally considered to improve uh, the user experience um, and get you closer to the eyeballs, especially if you're a content network, CDN, something like that. And of course, the, uh, the parties aren't bad. Some people just join for the marketing and the, and the social element, and it gets them into the community, so you can build up your ne network that way as well through connections. Transit being uh, something more the smaller ISPs do, um, for a, generally, it used to be a much larger fee. Um, so connecting to the larger internet, uh, to, to connect to the internet. Um, not so much control over routes. Um, so that's generally why, why people are peering. So um, thanks to Dr. Peering for this. It's slightly redesigned, but I have stolen a bit. Um, but why? Why reinvent the wheel? And uh, so this is the traditional peering model. I'm very familiar to all, I'm sure. Um, but of course, the challenges uh, for peering and it being so attractive in terms of cost um, have now been challenged because transit is now ridiculously cheap in most um, in most developed markets. It's still obviously um, quite expensive in developing markets. So um, what we find is a lot of a lot of our customers will actually jump on our network to get to connect to uh, London to pick up cheap transit. Um, and also do some peering from there. Um, and this is, um, to be honest, this is kind of declining and with no end in sight. So it continues to decline. Um, and, and so for us, we have, to, we have to highlight the other benefits of, of peering um, for our business model. Um, but remote peering does change it up a bit. Um, so it's, it is still cost effective for, for a, lot of, a lot of companies, especially those um, coming from outside the more developed markets like Europe and the US, for example. Um, they still don't have to put equipment in every single location. Um, we can pick them up on a point on our network and we can give them um, a, a bandwidth that they can split over multiple VLANs and they can access multiple internet exchanges. And it's a very simple solution. It's very cost effective. It's less scary for them as well when they're entering a new market. So we can generally do a really good um, solution for them that bundles everything and it's a nice price. Um, so how does it help? Um, as I mentioned, further cost reductions, no need for hardware, install fees. Um, see if there's anything I didn't mention on there. I think I covered most of it. Um, and yeah, the paperwork, in, in, in terms of entering new markets, it's, quite, um, it's generally considered quite difficult for people, especially in Germany and some of the bureaucracy there. Um, but the paperwork, paperwork is vastly reduced for the IXPs, it's vastly reduced for the customer, everybody wins, really. Um, and they, and they generally like that single point of contact. So we can, instead of having four technical teams or, or multiple technical teams uh, for the transport and the internet exchange, and maybe some colo provider as well, um, they just have one. And they'll have a nice account manager at IX Reach. Um, and then we can turn it up a lot, a lot faster for them as well. Um, we, can, we, we generally make recommendations um, for our customers to actually um, turn up and multiple internet exchanges at the same time to save a lot of time and hassle for themselves as well, as well as saving cost. Um, so we used to say peering keeps traffic local, right? So remote peering kind of goes against that grain a little bit. Um, and they're not, it's not so local anymore. They're connecting to the likes of France IX, um, D, uh, DKX, AM6, uh, and it's very international. It's not just the regional guys anymore. Um, so some people like that, some people don't. Um, it just depends on how you configure your, ne your network. It, it shouldn't be too much of a problem for most people. Um, it promotes international traffic exchange. So what we have in the Middle East, for example, um, some of you will be aware is that a lot of those networks um, actually connect into Europe to connect with each other and bring the traffic back to the Middle East. So the UAE AX, uh, and a couple of other smaller players with less of a brand are trying to resolve that situation and make sure the traf traffic is actually peering locally. Um, and it makes sense for the market and for it to grow. Um, it does make le less sense over longer distances. Um, so the remote peering um, is probably better, for example, if you do it in Europe, if you actually get a pop in London and then branch out from there. Um, long lining it from Asia or the US is, is, uh, is not going to work. Um, yeah. VPOPs make that easier, but it's still not ideal. Um, and content providers want to be obviously closer to the eyeballs, so they want to appear in a lot of places. And, and that's where we can really help. Yeah. Um, the IXPs actually, um, just on the last point there, um, it actually gives them more of a business case. So it is tricky for them to reach uh, critical mass, but that will give them more of a business case for the content guys. Um, the IXPs are, sh are shifting their direction now, um, which is interesting. Um, 
The IXPs with critical mass uh, shouldn't have a problem, but the smaller ones are, are more at risk. Um, but they're behaving more like networks, so they're actually branching out and, and, and adding connectivity as an added service. They're, they're adding these, these um, value add services that people can pick up in terms of even colo sometimes and then um, giving them capacity. So the lines are getting a bit blurred between uh, networks, data centers, and guys like us. Um, so that's kind of an interesting, an interesting move. Um, they're expanding geographically, so we've got interesting movement with DKIX becoming, for example, um, more of a brand globally, and they're using that brand in the Middle East. And now there's some interesting movement on the um, on the East Coast of the US with uh, Lynx and other people um, who are now looking more like a brand globally. Um, and the smaller IXs are expanding regionally and offering things like um, connectivity to the DKIX, for example, or Lynx or AM6, to help uh, develop their members at the smaller local internet exchanges. So it's a lot more blurred these days. And um, so, of course, just to um, tie it in with France IX, um, remote peering, we believe, is, is, is crucial um, to building up IXPs as international um, connectivity points. Um, so France IX and Marseille, for example, is going to be very interesting um, for people, again, like the Middle Eastern guys who are landing their capacity in Marseille. Um, that they can then connect to um, various different networks in Europe from. So that, that'll be interesting. And remote peering will, will help with, with actually extending them to other internet exchanges in Europe. Um, we brought on 20 plus uh, members um, to France X, which we're very proud of. I hope they agree. Um, but it's, it's, it's time now for, for people to diversify, and they are doing that. So um, the XPs are diverse, di diversifying with their, their services, so it'll be interesting to see what happens. Um, transit is still expensive, I mentioned. Um, examples like Africa, <laughs> still horribly expensive. Um, and But those areas are developing uh, their networks, and they're looking to connect into um, the French networks, for example. So Africa is an interesting region, as is the Middle East. Um, and we can offer fractional ports. So that, um, when people are remote peering, um, they can actually take on 100 meg with us, um, which they can't necessarily do at all internet exchanges, um, right up to 10 gig and 100 gig as well coming soon. Um, so that'll help them just step into that market a little bit, a little bit more easily. Um, so just to conclude, um, yeah, transit continues to fall. Peering is still valuable. We're still very pleased with it and hope everyone agrees. Um, remote peering can help reduce some of those costs. It can help develop new markets. It can help bring new players into the market. It can help promote um, regional internet exchanges and help them grow to become more international. Um, it doesn't make sense over long distances. It's a great way to get close to the eyeballs. Um, the roles of the networks are changing. Um, and it's already happening. Um, so. Let's see, let's see what's next. Um, so there's a lot of interesting shifts in, in the market at the moment. And uh, one last message from our London HQ. Let's just keep calm and carry on peering. And I think that's it. I'll take some questions, if anyone has any. Nope. Ah, making my life easy. <laughs> okay. Thank you. <laughs>